Hi, these are the trigonometry lectures on educator.com, and we're here today to talk about De Moivre's theorem. So, De Moivre's theorem is a little bit tricky. The idea is that we're going to use the polar form of complex numbers to find nth powers and nth roots of complex numbers. So, we start with a complex number z. We write it in polar form r e to the i theta. Remember, we learned in the previous lecture how to convert a complex number into polar form. So if that's a little bit um, unfamiliar to you, what you should really do is go back and review the previous lecture on how to convert a complex number into polar form and how to convert it back into rectangular form. Um, there's several formulas that we're going to be using very heavily here. One that we learned in the previous lecture is e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. We're going to be using that really heavily. So let's see how we can use that to find nth powers of complex numbers. So if we're trying to find z to the n, we write that as r e to the i theta to the nth power. And now if you think about that, we can distribute this nth power onto the r and onto the e to the i theta. But r to the n, that just gives you r to the n. e to the i theta raised to the nth power. That's an exponent raised to the, an exponent. And so that's, you, remember you multiply the exponents. That's where I get i theta times n here. So e to the i times n theta. But then if you expand that, remember that e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. So e to the i n theta gives you cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. So that's where De Moivre's theorem comes in handy, and that's where it comes from, is that you can expand this into r to the n times cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta. Um, another way to, to start out with that is to expand e to the i theta into cosine theta of i plus i sine theta. But the form we're going to be using most often is this form right here. z to the n is equal to r to the n times cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. So I know this looks like lots of stuff to remember here. The key one that you want to memorize is this one right here. z to the n is equal to r to the n times cosine theta plus i sine of n theta. Memorize that one and we'll practice it during the examples. Now, the next step of using De Moivre's theorem is to, instead of finding nth powers, we're going to find nth roots. So for example, we'll find square roots and cube roots and fourth roots of complex numbers. And this is quite a bit more tricky than it is with real numbers. In fact, if you're looking for nth roots of a complex number, you always expect to find exactly n answers. So for example, if a problem says find all the eighth roots of a complex number, you better find eight answers. Um, unless, of course, the complex number happens to be zero, in which case the only roots are zero. So that's why I say every non-zero complex number has exactly n nth roots here. So let me show you how to find them. It's a little bit complicated. Um, first of all, we think about the nth root of z. We write that as z to the 1 over n. And again, that's r e to the i theta to the 1 over n. And that expands into, remember, e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta to the 1 over n. And remember how when we were finding nth powers, we um, distributed the n into the r. So we, have, we had r to the n. Let me, let me write this again. z to the n was r to the n times e to the n i theta, which was r to the n times cosine theta, or cosine of n theta. You multiply the angle by n plus i sine n theta. Now with um, 1 over n, 
replacing the, the n by 1 over n, we get r to the 1 over n cosine to the theta over n, forget about the extra term so far, um, cosine to the theta over, over n plus i sine theta over n. So we start out with just cosine to the theta over n plus i sine theta over n. So we look at theta over n, but then we have to find other nth roots as well. So our first nth root is just theta over n. To find the other ones, what we add on is multiples of 2 pi, multiples of 2 pi over n. So that's why I say 2k pi over n. And we keep doing that for different values of k. So the reason we do that is we run all the values of k up to from 0 to n minus 1. If we plugged in k equals n into this formula, we get theta over n plus 2n pi over n, which would be theta over n plus 2 pi. And in terms of angles, that's the same as theta over n again. So that's why we stop at n minus 1. We don't go to, to k equals n, because when we get to k equals n, we're repeating ourselves again. So essentially what we're doing here is we're breaking up the unit circle into multiples of theta over n. Theta over n, theta plus 2 pi over n, theta plus 4 pi over n. And we're just taking all these angles around the unit circle until we get back to theta over n. So this is a little bit tricky. What we do is we find one answer for each value of k, one nth root for each value of k. And since we run k from 0 to n minus 1, that's a total of n nth roots. So that's worth remembering. We'll practice this with the examples. Um, Anytime you have to find nth roots, the r part is easy. You do r to the 1 over n. But then you have to find this cosine and i sine formula for each angle, for each value of k from 0 to n minus 1. So you run this formula separately, n times over. And at the end, you have n complex numbers as your answers. So we'll, we'll check that out with some examples, and you'll get the hang of it. So the first example here, we have to convert the complex number z equals negative root 3 plus i into polar form, and then use de Moivre's theorem to calculate z to the seventh. So remember, to convert into polar form, you do r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Theta equals arctangent of y over x. And then sometimes you have to modify that theta formula. Sometimes you have to add on a pi. And you know you have to do that when the x is negative. You do that if x is negative. So let's find our r and our theta here. Let me graph that thing. Oops. graph it just so that we'll be able to check whether our answer is plausible. Negative square root of 3 on the x-axis, i on the y-axis. So that's about right there. And let me uh, actually calculate out the r and theta to see if it's plausible. r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. x squared is 3. y squared is 1. So square root of 4 is 2. Theta is arctangent of negative, or 1 over negative square root of 3. 
which is negative root 3 over 3. That's a common value. And so the arctangent of that is negative pi over 6. Oh, but there's this fudge factor that I have to include here. Um, it, the x is less than 0 here, so I have to add on a pi. So I add on a pi, and I get 5 pi over 6. And that does check with my little graph here because that really is 5 pi over 6, the angle over there. And the radius does indeed look like about 2. So that's kind of reassuring. So z is equal to r e to the i theta. That's 2 e to the 5 pi over 6 i. So we have converted the complex number into polar form. That was the first uh, part of the exercise. But the main part here is to use De Moivre's theorem to calculate z to the seventh. So let's work that out. z to the seventh, the whole point is that we're going to use the polar form to find z to the seventh. So this is 2e to the 5 pi over 6 i, all raised to the seventh power. So that's 2 to the seventh. Now, I have e to an exponent raised to an exponent. So I just want to multiply those two exponents. e to the 7 times 5 is 35, whoops, 35 pi over 6. I. Now 35 pi over 6 is a little cumbersome. That's not in between 0 and 2 pi, so I'll, I'll uh, work on that a little bit. In the meantime, 2 to the 7th is 128. Five, 35 pi over 6, how can I simplify that? 35 pi over 6, let me subtract a 2 pi. 2 pi is 12 pi over 6. So that's 23 pi over 6. Uh, that's still not in my range between 0 and 2 pi. Let me subtract another 2 pi. That gives me another 12 pi over 6. Off is 11 pi over 6. That is in the range between 0 and 2 pi. So this is the same as e to the 11 pi over 6 i. Now I want to convert that into rectangular form. And it's very good to remember this formula. e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. And you can also use x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. But I prefer the e to the i theta form. So this is equal to 128 um, cosine of 11 pi over 6 plus i times the sine of 11 pi over 6. So that's 128. 11 pi over 6, where is that on a unit circle? That's just pi over 6 short of 2 pi. That's down there. Now that's a common value. I know what the sine and cosine are. It's uh, root 3 over 2 and 1 half. And let's see, root 3 over 2 is positive. The sine is negative because it's below the x-axis, so it's negative 1 half. And so I have 128 over 2. That's 64 root 3 uh, minus 64i is what that simplifies down to. OK, let's review how we did that one. We start out with a complex number, and we have to convert into polar form. So I look at my formulas for r and theta, including the fudge factor for theta if x is less than 0. Run that through. My x and y are negative root 3 and 1. So I get an r. I get a theta, including the fudge factor. And that gives me r e to the i theta. So I've got my polar form. To raise it up to the seventh power, uh, De Moivre's theorem says if you use polar form, then you just put 2 to the 7th and then n theta. So this is the n theta. And that reduces down to 
by subtracting 2 pi at a time, e to the 11 pi over 6. So this is really n theta here, cosine n theta, sine of n theta, although we reduced down by subtracting off 2 pi, over, uh, 2 pi at a time. And so we get 128 times the cosine and sine of 11 pi over 6. That's a common value. I look at my unit circle to remember my sine and cosine of 11 pi over 6. I plug them in and I get my answer. Second example here, we have to find all complex eighth roots of the number 16. Now, in order to, um, un to, to find all complex eighth roots, we have to think about 16 as being a complex number. Of course, 16 is just the same as 16 plus 0i, so that is a complex number. Um, we, we're asked for eighth roots, so let me remind you that because we're asked for eight root, eighth roots, we expect eight answers, eight different answers. So we have to, to find eight answers here. Um, so I'm going to try and write 16 in polar form. R is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And theta is arctan of y over x plus pi if the x happens to be negative. So my r is the square root of 16 squared plus 0 squared. That's just 16. Theta is arctan. Oh, my y is 0. So arctan of 0 is 0. So my z is really 16e to the 0i, which, of course, um, I could have I worked that out. Uh, certainly, 16e to the 0 is 16 just by itself, because e to the 0 is 1. Um, so that's nice to check our work. z to the 1 eighth. Now, according to de Moivre's theorem, let me remind you what de Moivre's theorem said about um, complex roots, nth roots. It said that um, you do r to the 1 over n times cosine of theta plus 2k pi over n plus i sine of that same large expression, theta plus 2k pi over n. And you run this for different values of k. k is equal to 0, 1, 2, up to n minus 1. And so here our n is 8. And so z to the 1 eighth is r is 16, 16 to the 1 eighth. And now I have cosine of theta is 0. So 0 plus 2k pi, 2k pi, I wrote 2 pi pi, but of course that should be a k over 8 plus i sine of 0 plus 2k pi over 8. Now, there's going to be lots of values for k here. Maybe I should make a little chart for what k is and then the different angles that we have for each value of k the different angles we're going to be plugging into tomorrow's formula there. So 0 plus 2k pi over 8, which actually simplifies down to um, just k pi over 4. So for k goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you run it to n minus 1, and n is 8. 
So it's 0 through 7 there. And so we'll have 0 pi over 4. 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2. 3 pi over 4. 4 pi over 4 is pi. 5 pi over 4. 6 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 2. And 7 pi over 4 is, there's nothing, no way we can simplify that. That's just 7 pi over 4. So for each one of these angles, we're going to plug it in and we're going to get an answer. Um, I also have to simplify 16 to the 1 8. Let me see if I can do something with that. 16 to the 1 8. I know that 16 is 2 to the 4th. And so that's 2 to the 4 8 2 to the 1 half is square root of 2. So I'm going to multiply the square root of 2, that's, two to the, that's 16 to the 1 8, times now cosine theta plus i sine theta for each one of these values of theta. Cosine theta plus i sine theta. Um, let me not reuse the same uh, Greek letter theta. I'll use uh, alpha. For each one of these values of alpha here. So let me write down what cosine alpha plus i sine alpha is for each one of these values of alpha. Now cosine of 0 plus i sine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. Plus i sine of 0 is just 0. Um, cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. Cosine and sine of pi over 4 are both square root of 2 plus i, squ or sorry, square root of 2 over 2. So that's uh, k equals 1. For pi over 2, the cosine is 0. The sine is 1. For 3 pi over 2, um, we have the cosine is negative root 2, or sorry, 3 pi over 4, negative root 2 over 2. The sine is still positive, root 2 over 2. I think this will be easy to work out if I draw a unit circle so that I can easily and quickly find these sines and cosines. They're all common values, but it helps draw a unit circle to remember where things are positive and negative. So what I started with is pi over 4. There's pi over 2. There's 3 pi over 4. Pi. We're going to move on to 5 pi over 4. 3 pi over 2. Move on to 7 pi over 4. And we started out at 0. So let's see, we've already hit 3 pi over 4. Moving on to pi now, cosine and sine is negative 1 plus 0i. 5 pi over 4, cosine and sine are both negative root 2 over 2. But they're both negative. 3 pi over 2, the cosine is 0 again. and the sine is negative 1. And finally, 7 pi over 4, cosine and sine are root 2 over 2, but the cosine is positive and the sine is negative. So now for our answers, what we have to do is multiply root 2 by each one of these. So let me multiply the root 2 by each one of these. The first one you just get square root of 2 times 1 plus 0. Multiplying root 2 times root 2 over 2, that gives me 2 over 2, which gives me 1 plus i times the same thing, so just i. Multiply root 2 times 0 plus i gives me root 2i. Multiply root 2 by these, we get negative 1 plus i. Multiply root 2 here, we get negative root 2. Multiply root 2 here, negative 
1 minus i. Remember, root 2 times root 2 over 2 is 2 over 2, which simplifies to 1. Multiply root 2 here, we get negative root 2i. And multiply root 2 here, we get 1 minus i. And so, we are finally done here. We get eight different answers, eight different complex numbers here. Each one of these complex numbers has the property that if you raise it up to the eighth power, it'll come out to be exactly 16. So let me write down what we found here. Each one satisfies w to the eighth is equal to 16. If you multiply them up eight times by themselves eight times, you'll get back to 16. Of course, that would be pretty messy. I'm not going to check that here, but uh, you can check it on your own if you like. Now, let me recap how we found that. We started out with the complex number 16. Think about it as 16 plus 0i. We wanted to write that in polar form, so I found an r and a theta. R is 16, theta is 0, so z is 16 e to the 0 i. Then I used de Moivre's theorem, which says that you get complex nth roots by doing r to the 1 over n. That's where the 16 to the 1 over 8 came from. And then cosine plus i sine of these angles, theta plus 2k pi over n. So that's why I started to make this chart, theta plus 2k pi over 8. And you run the k from 0 to n minus 1. So that's why I ran the k from 0 to 7. For each one of those, I got an angle that I called alpha. And then I worked out cosine alpha plus i sine of alpha for each one of those. That's where I got this section of values here. And for that, it was really helpful to plot my alphas on the unit circle here and remember what the sines and cosines of each one of them was. Um, of course, those are common values, so I didn't need a calculator to look those up. Multiply each one by 16 to the 1 over 8, and little cleverness with the laws of exponents tells me that that's root 2. So finally, I multiply each one of those by root 2, and I get eight different answers. Each one of them is an eighth root of 16 in complex numbers. OK, we're now going to find all complex cube roots of negative 1. Now, cube roots, that's a third root. So we expect three answers here, because we're looking for cube roots. Um, again, I want to put that complex number into polar form first. So I'm going to use my r equals square root of x squared plus y squared. And theta equals arctan of y over x plus pi if x is less than 0. And so negative 1, think of that as negative 1 plus 0i. So the x is negative 1, the y is 0. So my r is square root of x squared plus y squared. So that is square root of 1, so r is 1. Theta is arctan of y over x. That's arctan of 0. x is less than 0, so I have to add pi. Arctan of 0 is just 0, so theta is pi. So z is equal to um, r e to the i theta, so 1 e to the i pi. OK, so I've got my complex number into polar form. Now I'm going to use de Moivre's theorem. Let me remind you how that goes. It says r to the 1 over n times cosine of theta plus 2k pi over n plus i sine of theta plus 2k pi over n. 
And the key thing here is k is equal to 0, 1, 2, up to n minus 1. Well, here we're finding cube roots. So our n is 3. So let me make a little chart again of the angles. Um, n is 3. Theta is pi. So I'll make a chart of k and theta plus 2k pi over 3 for each value of k here. k goes from 0 to n minus 1, so that's 0, 1, and 2. Now, theta plus 2k pi over 3, when k is 0, that's just, theta is pi, remember, so that's just pi over 3. When k is 1, that's pi plus 2 pi over 3, which is 3 pi over 3, which is pi. When k is 2, this is pi plus 4 pi over 3 which is 5 pi over 3. So the three angles we're going to be looking at are pi over 3, pi, and 5 pi over 3. Let me also work out r to the 1 over n. r to the 1 over n, r is 1 raised to the 1 third power is just 1. So that part's very easy. Um, so we have cosine of alpha plus i sine of alpha for each one of these alphas. So cosine of pi over 3 plus i sine of pi over 3. Let me draw out where that would be. Pi over 3 is about right there. Uh, pi is right there, and 5 pi over 3 is down there. So those are the three angles I'm going to be looking at. Let me go ahead and include this in my chart. Cosine alpha plus I sine alpha. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. I sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. That's because pi over 3 is right there. Pi, the cosine, is negative 1, the x-coordinate. I sine is 0. And 5 pi over 3, that's down here, is cosine is 1 half. And the sine is negative root 3 over 2. So that was cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. Now r to the 1 over n times cosine alpha plus i sine alpha is kind of anticlimactic because we already figured out that r to the n to the 1 over n is just 1. So we're just multiplying each one of these by 1. So we get 1 half plus i root 3 over 2, negative 1, and 1 half minus i root 3 over 2 as our three answers. Remember, we were looking for cube roots, so we did expect to find three answers, so it's reassuring here that we found our three answers. So let me remind you how we did that. First of all, we were given a complex number. We had to convert it into polar form. So I found my r and my theta using the standard formulas. I did have to include the fudge factor plus pi here because the x was less than 0. So arctan of 0 gave me theta equals pi. So my theta was pi. My r was 1. So I get e to the 1 e to the i pi. Now I go to de Moivre's theorem, which says r to the 1 over n times cosine theta plus 2k pi over n, i sine theta plus 2k pi over n. So I made a little chart of the different values of k. You go from 0 to n minus 1. For each one, I figured out theta plus 2k pi over n. So that gave me the pi over 3 
pi and 5 pi over 3. I found the cosine plus i sine of each one, and then I multiplied those by r to the 1 over n, and that gave me my three answers. So those are the three complex numbers that are cube roots of negative 1. Each one satisfies w cubed would be equal to negative 1. If you worked out w cubed for any of these complex numbers, you'd get negative 1. So we've got some more examples for you later. Try them out on your own, and then we'll work through them together.